You're listening to Just a Pinch Podcast with Injector Kristen. Join me and industry experts as we discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of the aesthetics, wellness, and fitness industries. Okay, welcome back to Just a Pinch Podcast. I'm here today with my very, very missed CO2 laser rep, Anthony Porcaro. Uh, he left us and moved across the country, but I still bug him all the time with all my CO2 and microneedling questions. So, so happy to have you on with me today. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Kristen. It's good to be here. I uh, I miss you dearly. The West ah. Coast is not the same, I got to <laughs> say. Um, it's much different out here, but all the best to you and the whole team over there. Well, you guys must have like the perfect weather for laser year round, just kind of like a little gloomy and rainy and overcast, right? Oh, Seattle is the perfect market for lasers. It's (laughs) always kind of misty and overcast and gray. Totally agree. Although it's kind of gray and white outside right now. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So we're going to chat about some CO2 laser today. Um, There are seemingly a gazillion different types of lasers on the market today in 2022. Um, But today is really going to be about CO2 because it is what I think is one of the best things to ever happen to aesthetic medicine. And CO2 has been around for a really long time. Um, It's been around from like the dawn of time of doing horrible deep phenol peels and doing dermabrasion, not even microdermabrasion. Um, So it was one of the original types of laser that was used for skin resurfacing and scar treatments. Um, And the way that CO2 laser was once used was fully ablative. And when we say fully ablative, we mean they're vaporizing the entire epidermis of the treatment area and they're not leaving any healthy skin bridges in between. And you're kind of just like a burn victim for the next month. Um, While it was effective, it was really painful. It had a really long drawn out month long recovery. um, And it sometimes left people looking a little bit mask like and their skin almost a little bit bleached. Um, If you kind of think of what some burn victims can actually genuinely look like after they're healed, CO2 could sometimes do that. Um, But in today's new technology, we now have these fantastic devices that have improved the delivery of this CO2 laser. Um, and today we're going to be talking about the Cartessa Tetra CO2. Um, Anthony is who brought us our lovely device and got us trained and set up on it. And we have been absolutely adoring this laser ever since we started with it. Um, so the Tetra CO2 is a fractional CO2 device. Mind you, we can technically use it fully ablative, but we do not. Um, And what I mean by fractional is that it is going to deliver a little scatter dot pattern um, that we're going to tell it, you know, all the parameters, and it's going to leave healthy skin in between the areas of vaporization. Uh, So Anthony, you want to expand a little bit about what makes the Tetra special? Yeah, and kind of to allude a little bit on the origination of CO2, right, in the early 90s when people were using it to completely rip off their epidermis, like you said, you know, we don't need to do that anymore, but we can still get somewhat the same results. None of the negative side effects, like glass face, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. when somebody looks completely bleached, that's just not a sexy outcome anymore. And we can achieve flawless, perfect skin without having that quote unquote glass face to look so fake. And what's really unique about the Tetra, one of many things is the way it houses the CO2 gas. And an RF excited steel tube gives us the ability to send more energy through it. And when we can send more energy through a CO2 gas, crazy things happen, like the ability to perform what we call a cool peel, which is with no downtime CO2 procedure. And when I say that, I know when I told you that at the office the first time, you're like, no way, that's not possible. Stop, get out of here. (laughs) And when I tell everybody that it's the same thing, they're like, there's no way that you can hit me with a CO2 laser beam and I'm not down for at least a week. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, well, let me show it to you, right? And that's one of the great things is I can actually show you just like I showed y'all at the office, you know, hey, let me fire this carbon dioxide laser on you and your skin might be pink for 24 to 48 and hours. And no depending. numbing. And no numbing. Yes, you can come <laughs> in right off the street and get hit with this laser and go, oh, I'm going to have new skin. Yep. And the whole point of it, right, and why it fits so great into today's marketplace 
is that you can have a no downtime CO2 treatment. We just got to trade three times in the chair versus one and no downtime, Mm -hmm. right? So we can achieve that flawless, perfect skin like you personally have um, and that I'm working towards. (laughs) But we can achieve that with none of the pain, none of the downtime, the antibiotics, the sedation medication. Mm -hmm. That's CO2 of the past. Um, of course, we still have that ability when somebody crazy comes in off the street and says, hey, I took a month off work. Um, I don't know what else to do besides get a fully ablative CO2. Yeah, you know, yeah, sure. Go for it. Um, but there's so many different parameters you can play with, which I'm sure you've messed with a bit in the office. Um, yeah, when- I, I think the Tetra cool. is such a unique device. And when I'm talking to patients about it, I like to to tell them, you know, oh, this isn't just a cool peel machine. You know, this isn't just a, a plain old CO2 laser. Like we can bring you in off the street during your lunchtime and do a no numbing, you know, very, very minimal downtime cool peel treatment, which is still a CO2 laser treatment. And like, I'm sorry, but CO2 is CO2. Like this is mm-hmm. a, it's still a vaporizing laser treatment, you know, or I can cut the refrigerator in half, you know, like the machine is so versatile from being so gentle to being used in laser surgery. So Mm -hmm. it's incredible with what it can do and, and the wide variety. And this device was made so user-friendly that all of your, your, your treatment parameters can just be mostly done right on your handpiece. You're clicking through, you're changing your size of your laser beam. You're able to get up into these tiny little nooks and crannies, easy touch of a button interface to change and pop in between your settings. It's incredible. So like I can give somebody a cool peel and, oh, they have an acne scar right there that I want to target. Oh, now we're doing a DECA pulse and boom, one pulse Mm -hmm. there. Now we have a really targeted specialized treatment for that person instead of having them go through all this downtime they get the benefits of a beautiful cool peel co2 treatment and we're able to go in there and get that scar at at the same time exactly I, i mean just personally i was in a case last week where the first patient we treated completely anesthetized didn't know where she was shields in her eyes everything and we did a very aggressive deca pulse yep. double stack deca pulse followed by a no spacing cool peel turn around the next doctor that sits in the chair, no numbing cream, cool peel. They have a Christmas party they're going to today, three days later. Yeah. So yep. that's the kind of variability that a provider like yourself must really enjoy. Oh, um, it's and fantastic. something that I love to, to represent, right? Yeah, no, I, I love this machine. And with every patient that sits in the chair, nobody's getting a cookie cutter treatment. Everything is so custom tailored to, I mean, not just the patient, but the parts of their skin, you know, it's really dialed in and it's so user-friendly that you can, if you want to go a little bit more gentle and do a slight cool peel on the under eyes, cause you're not trying to blow them out for the weekend. You can do that. And, oh, we've got some heavier lines and wrinkles around their peri oral. We're going to decapulse them all through here and really target that and then blend out the edges. But, oh, we've got some pigmentation hiding over here. All right, we're going to get some deeper wrinkles done with decapulse, and then we're going to cool peel right on top of it and really target that pigment at the same time. So, I mean, these people are getting multiple treatments within one and with no extra time, you know, for me to be able to do a, a decapulse full face and then do a cool peel on top, I don't need to book extra time to their appointment. Yeah. It happens so fast. Whether I'm doing it painting style, kind of just painting on that cool peel afterwards, or if I'm just pulsing it through at 600, it's so fast that, you know, we can make on the fly changes to their treatment and not say, oh, we have to have you come back. It's so fast and so easy to use. When the cookie cutter aspect of CO2 has always really been the downfall, Mm -hmm. right? It is everybody loves CO2. Everybody always has, even when it was really gross and fully ablative in the past, people still loved it. And now they love it even more because with this device specifically, if this device was around 15 or 20 years ago, it would have changed the aesthetic landscape as we know it today in terms of treatments that people receive, energy devices that are used, just because humans honestly haven't had the ability to harness a carbon dioxide laser like this and use it in such a broad range. And you can treat anybody that walks through the door. FDA cleared for Fitzpatrick one through six means that there is no more cookie cutter CO2. Mm -hmm. Anybody that comes into your practice, anybody that comes into your office, 
you just, like you said, change the parameters for them. Exactly. And when we can, when we can tailor treatments to a, a patient's specific need, that's when a tool like the Tetra becomes really beneficial and, and pays off for the provider. We feel good about the results that we're giving and we know that we can stand by them. Yep. And I mean, we've even gotten to the point where we're comfortable treating a wider range of Fitzpatrick skin types, even with the DECA pulse. Um, You know, we've gotten really comfortable with treating skin of color, being able to target a lot of scarring. Uh, We treat a lot of Indian patients and a lot of Hispanic patients. Yeah. And we can decapulse them. And we are, um, you know, even with minimal skin prep with pigment fighters uh, and, you know, the like the hydroquinones and things, it, we've really just dialed into the settings and figured out, you know, it's, I mean, it's the heat load that that's oftentimes creating a lot of PIH or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Just pop that dwell time down. We can still drill into the skin deeply with, with higher energy the energy is not what's causing skin complications afterwards. It's that dwell time. So if we have a nice comfortable range of treatment parameters where we can treat somebody aggressively, but still keep their skin safe. I mean, we, we can do it with the Tetra and I'm mm-hmm. even more comfortable doing it with this CO2 laser than I am with my non-ablative Fraxel. Yeah. And I think that speaks volumes to, to this device, not just the, you know, the users using it, but the actual technology. There's just so many other complications with using things like erbiums to resurface. There's so many other chromophores in our tissue, in our skin that those wavelengths interact with. And if you could use, you know, a true 10,600 nanometer wavelength, which is what a carbon dioxide is utilizing, you know, and you can harness that ability to perform, you know, what we've referenced a cool peel to instantaneously vaporize tissue without any dwell time then we can stay away from just like you said, any PIH, which opens the door to a whole realm of possibilities. I mean, my fiance is Chinese and I treat her with a carbon dioxide laser. That's unheard of. Mm -hmm. Usually the only thing we're treating Asian skin with due to risk of melasma is a Pico laser or something like that. Um, The ability that I can treat her at my house, nonetheless, with no numbing cream um, and a little fan blown by the smoke smoke detector, of course. Uh, but the fact that I can treat her at my house with this system and with her type of skin, that's incredible to me because that's a population that we really couldn't help with a CO2 laser until the Tetra came along. Yep. No, it's incredible. And, um, notoriously Asian skin can be tricky with lasers, um, because despite the fact that, um, some Asian skin will look really pale, it's going to be very reactive. And there's a couple of different skin types that are like that, um, that can be tricky. And some, some providers have been fooled and duped into thinking, oh, I see a nice light skin tone. I can treat it just like they are, you know, Irish and you cannot. <laughs> you <laughs> so cannot, it takes no. a little bit more care, but having a good device that you can really dial in your treatment settings and parameters, you can treat people effectively and safely. Uh, right. But I found with some other, other devices is that sure, you might be able to treat different skin colors, but are you really getting the results that you're looking for? Or do you have to turn down that energy so low that we are, we're being subtherapeutic with, with our treatment outcomes and with the Tetra, I'm not. Yeah. And you can have a whole other slew of implications from under treating somebody. So not only not treating what you set out to treat, but ramifications like making that chromophore, the target we're going for, even worse. So you're right. The ability to confidently step in and treat with something like this on a broad range of skin types, it's a, it's a great feeling, at least from my perspective. Right? Oh, yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I just recently did my first uh, DECA treatment on myself, or I didn't do it on myself, but had it done on myself um, to my chest. And I could not believe how easy it was. So Mm -hmm. at that treatment day, I did uh, a cool peel to my face, no numbing. And I did numb for, I'd say probably 30 or 45 minutes just at home on my way into the office for my chest. Mm -hmm. I felt nothing. Yeah. I felt nothing. It was so simple, so easy recovery was like a couple days longer than my cool peel. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and being on the chest, you're going to be slower recovery anyways, because you have less blood supply than the face does. Yeah. But I could not believe how easy it was. Yeah. And that's the whole point. That's why people love it, right? There's none of this, Hey, 
bite down on this wooden rod and like grin and bear it, we're going to get through it. You know, we, even if you're going with an aggressive treatment, like a Decapulse, mm -hmm. like a double stack Decapulse even, and followed by a cool peel right on the top, you numb for 15 or 20 minutes and it's doable, right? It's, if you it's numb for really 30, tolerable. Yeah. 30, like you said, you're not feeling anything. You're yeah. like, what are you doing down there? <laughs> exactly. Literally. Like I could feel the the, the, you know, the little metal grid grates, uh -huh. from the laser touching me. And that was it. I mean, I felt nothing. It was fantastic. And, and um, one thing that we've really, we've partnered with our treatments more so with the decas and the cool peels. But if I have somebody that I'm more worried about PIH with, I'll use it with them too. We're immediately putting um, Benev brand exosomes on and healing yeah. is ridiculous. Like night and day difference in the healing process and also just in, in treatment outcomes as well. Those have been a huge improvement in our, our outcomes. Yeah. And I, those growth factors post are awesome. Personally, I've been using, I love that you've, you've been using Benev. I've been yeah. using a brand called Antiage over here on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, they're using bone marrow growth factors. So same thing, oh, cool. but on topically afterwards, delivering it to the tissue that's just mm -hmm. been beat up. I, I am seeing, I'm seeing incredible results. I would love to see some of your pictures. Yeah, too. it's incredible. And just anecdotally from patients, you know, when, when you first finish doing your pass of CO2 laser, you feel hot like a sunburn and it's not because necessarily that laser is at least with the cool peel, putting heat into your skin, you're getting slapped in the face by a laser ultimately. And what you're feeling is that inflammation of those, that energy vaporizing your skin. And so that's what's happening with the cool peel is you're just getting slapped in the face by this laser with the deca pulse. You are getting a little bit of heat load into the skin because your dwell time, you're just getting more exposure, longer exposure to that energy. So you're getting a little, you know, thermal area zone and you're in your dermal layer, which is going to feel a little bit hotter, mm -hmm. putting those exosomes on instantaneously, basically put out that fire. And yeah. it's just giving instant relief and calming. You know, we're everybody sitting there with a zimmer. They just feel like they just, you know, sat outside all day without a sunscreen on. Mm -hmm. And then you put that layer of exosomes on and they all, every single person goes, ah. Oh. Yep. And it's so much nicer than something occlusive too, right? Yes. The old school has always been, all right, right after a CO2, slap on a bunch of petroleum jelly. Which or makes no sense. Aquifer. No, because all you're doing is retaining. You're trapping the heat. And especially with your darker skin types, you're way more prone to PIH if we're yep. trapping heat. Another benefit of the cool peel, right? Yep. It's again, like, I love that slap in the face analogy because you are really feeling afterwards, right? Exactly. It you and it's the sting that remains. Yep, exactly. Um, and like within a couple hours, even after a DECA, that heat load and kind of that little throb that you get is dissipated. Um, um, so it's such a fast recovery and keeping your skin cool and helping speed up your recovery will decrease your risk of side effects and adverse outcomes. Um, I'm personally somebody that's prone to PIH. I am a walking conundrum with my Swedish skin. Um, I am about as pale as they come and my skin acts to energy like it is a Fitzpatrick four or five. It's crazy. Um, I am very, very prone to PIH. However, one thing that I've started implementing is utilizing hypochlorous acid immediately post laser as well. So after I'm done doing a pass of somebody's cool peel or deca pulse, I saturate a gauze with hypochlorous and I will pat down their skin with it because it's so anti-inflammatory. You're also just helping debride the skin and get some coolness onto there. I do that yeah. first and then benev exosomes and then cool, cold air. So the faster you get that heat load down, the less risk of PIH and complications that you have. Once I started doing that, I would no longer get any pigment issues with my personal skin afterwards, which has been incredible. Are you finding it sensitive with the hypochlorous on there afterwards, or are you finding that it's just, it's neutral enough to where it's not? It's neutral enough. Some people will be a little bit sensitive to it, but it's, it's for a minute and that's yeah. it. And then it, it's gone. Um, I personally do not cleanse my skin afterwards, even for like the first two days with, mm -hmm. with cleanser. I only use hypochlorous. So I keep a bottle of it at home and I use that kind of, um, because one thing that's like very common with post-laser care is to use, um, vinegar compresses and vinegar soaks. Mm -hmm. You do a diluted vinegar solution to help right. bring down some of that heat and help kind of calm down the skin. Hypochlorous is doing a very similar type of thing, um, just without the mixing. 
Um, yeah. And the one that I'm using is about a hundred parts per million. So it's not at your sanitizing level, but it's at a more just kind of calming cleansing level. Um, I don't get any irritation from it. And that's what I've been using to kind of clean off my skin. Cause I use the, the Elastin protocol afterwards. Yeah. Um, I don't use soothe and protect bomb personally. I'm acne prone. It breaks me out. I don't yeah, like occlusive it stuff. Me. It's gross. Mm -hmm. uh, but I use their, um, the Elastin nectar. And I mean, that's a game changer in healing as well. Yeah. I love um, that hypochlorous thing. I'm going to have to implement that in some of my treatments as well. Cause it's that's fantastic. I always it's learn really great. Learning something new. Yeah. Hypochlorous is like my baby. I mean, I literally use it as a toner every single day on my skin. Um, yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's, it really, it targets so many different things. Um, and speaking of skincare leading into laser, um, the, with different types of lasers, the thing that the laser is targeting is called a chromophore and the chromophore in CO2 laser is water. And yep. so you need to have water in your skin to have a good treatment. And it is very easy to tell with the Tetra if your skin is hydrated enough or not. So there are some people that, you know, everybody gets the same pre-instructions, whether or not you follow along is totally up to you. Uh, but I can tell if you haven't been, because if mm -hmm. I'm hitting your skin with this laser and I am struggling to see these tiny little vaporization points on your skin, it means that you do not have enough water in your skin and that the laser is struggling to find water to vaporize. If we're not vaporizing water, we're not vaporizing skin. Um, mm -hmm. So you're getting a subpar treatment with that. So to help boost that, it's really good to use a hyaluronic acid based serum on your skin, at least one to two weeks leading up to your treatment. Um, you know, drinking water. Yeah, sure. It's fine. But you really need to be drawing it directly into your skin and you don't want to overdo it either. Um, it's hard to find these products over the counter or even medical grade that are too high of a concentration of HA. But if you overdo it with HA, you can actually dehydrate your skin because you're going to pull water up from the deep layers of your skin. And it's going to actually dry you out. So what kind of your skin, it works so kinda, well. What kind of HA are you using? Um, you so some of my it. favorites would be the Elastin Immerse. That one's really good because that's going to put HA in your skin and it has peptides in it as well, which are going to trigger your body to produce more of its own and mm. also help down regulate how you're, how you're on a daze, which is going to break it down. Um, gotcha. I also like Skin V, uh, their hyaluronic acid serum lovely. It's a 1%, which is perfect. Um, I also like SkinCeuticals, HA uh, Intensifier, and their Hydrating B5 gels. Those are some of my favorites. Um, if those you're a um, Skin Medica fan, the HA5 is good as well. Those are all great. I've used the Elastin before. I've recently found one that I, I don't know if you've heard of called Noon Aesthetics. Mm, um, no. I, they're from Israel and they're kind of making this come up on the US aesthetic market. Um, at least over here on the West coast. And it's a really light HA. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, I have been personally using it before CO2 treatments. And I think I've seen a good result in terms of water retention, but like you said, not being too intense, mm -hmm. I'll use it after I shave and it doesn't sting. Yes. So it's a little lighter, which is really nice for that. Um, but I'm always curious to learn what, learn what other people are using that the Elastin is, is just a fantastic yeah. product. Yeah, that one's fantastic. The Elastin one, like I was always SkinCeuticals. I loved the hydrating B5 and the HA intensifier, but the Elastin one is basically take those two and put them together. Um, mm -hmm. The HA intensifier kind of gets you from the peptide standpoint and helping upregulate your own and downregulate the hyaluronidase action. Uh, but the Elastin Immerse is everything that you need in one. Um, but that one, <laughs> you have to give really explicit instructions on how to use it because it feels so good. You want to just keep drenching your skin in it. <laughs> I would give it to patients for their prep and they'd come in two weeks later and they're like, it's gone. It's empty. And I'm like, you went through the whole thing in two weeks. <laughs> they love they're just lathering so their they just whole body. Using it. And it's like, no, yeah. don't, you don't have to do that. <laughs> less is more, less is more. Um, so you have to kind of like cup everybody's chin in their ear hands and teach them how to use it and be like, don't do too much. Yeah, um, but enough. doing the, the CO2, um, doing the prep with the, the hyaluronic acid prior to CO2, is one of the best things that you can do. Um, you know, ideally I'd love to have everybody prepping their skin with the elastin rejuvenating skin nectar for a couple of weeks ahead of time, clean out old dead and broken collagen and elastin, make your treatments better. 
hard to get people to do that in all honesty. It's easy to get them to use it as a post-care product. It's tough to get them to do it as a pre. And if I had to choose between them doing a prejuvenation with that or using a hyaluronic acid serum, it's the HA serum. And that's easy to get people to use because it's not a specialty item. And it's something that they should be using in their skincare routine, you know, on the daily, whether they're doing a procedure or not. So that's an easy sell and it's something that they can use all along and they don't feel like you are trying to get them, you know, and it's, it's tough because pre and post procedure skincare is so important. And it's almost as important as the treatment parameters that you're using in your laser treatment. Uh, but a lot of people feel like you're trying to take them for a ride financially with it, but it's like, I promise, I promise this is all for you and not for me. <laughs> well, a lot of physicians feel like that too. I know physicians that don't believe in skincare yes. and, and it blows my mind because like you said, it's just as important of a tool as the laser we're using to get to that final result that we're looking for. I mean, I can take all the pigment out of your skin in the world, but if you go lay in a tanning bed mm -hmm. or if you go lay in the sun with no sun and screen, you're still going to get pigment. Yeah. UV exposure after laser is like, I, I have, I literally have, I'm left speechless, speechless. for people <laughs> that, that want to go in the sun you know, oh, I'm going to Florida. No, you're not. <laughs> We're not doing this then. <laughs> you know, like you need to avoid the sun and UV exposure like Ebola after you get oh, yeah. laser done. You will trash your skin. Not only will you not get a result, you're going to look worse than you did before. Like that's how you're going to get scarring. That's how you're going to get hyperpigmentation. I mean, you like just, just don't like you need it's to take bad. a serious self in like if there's a time to be really like introspective and like take inventory of like who you are as a person and like how compliant you really are it's when you're about to drop some some cash on a laser treatment mm -hmm. can you follow directions will you use the skincare products that are recommended to you because I mean, we bundle them in. It's not optional for you to buy them because they're that important. So yeah. when you buy your laser package, I'm handing you an elastin nectar and telling you how to use it. You have paid for it. You are using it. If you are non-compliant, you're going to be going out sunbathing or like, God forbid, a tanning bed mm. and just not being compliant with things. You know, you, you don't follow directions. Don't waste your time because you're literally going to trash your skin. You're going to be worse off than if you did nothing. Yeah, there's no point in getting it done if you're not going to take care of it afterwards. And that's realistically the, the biggest question we are asked as laser reps on our end is how long are these results going to last? Yes. And my honest answer to that question every time is how are you going to take care of your skin? Because exactly. if you are going to take care of your skin and use sunscreen and hydrating moisturizers and what's correct for your skin, not just any of them, mm -hmm. then those res results are going to last quite a long time. But if you go and you're out in the sun, not wearing sunscreen, smoking cigarettes, eating oh God, cheeseburgers, yeah. drinking beer every day, those results might not last quite as long as, as somebody who really is taking care of themselves. And like you said, taking inventory and going, hey, like I paid big bucks for this. I want this to really work. Exactly. Um, and it's part of our, you know, our, our field that's overlooked a lot is that post-care is, Hey, so you important. know, is it going to work? Well, if you take care of your skin, it's going to work. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so, so important. You know, I, I use this analogy all the time, um, with injectables and skincare and, you know, lasers and all of this, it's like going to the dentist for your cleanings and not brushing your teeth at home. Mm -hmm. so, like don't come in and spend money on CO2 laser treatments if you're going to go home and just put Neutrogena on your skin every other day of the year. Exactly. I mean, one of my favorite analogies is, you know, a tailor, I, I don't know where I read this, but he famously said, you know, I can tailor a suit, but if that fabric is crap, then the suit's also going to be crap. Exactly. And so we can sit here all day long and we can treat skin. We can tailor skin to the way we want it. But if that skin is crap, we're not going to see a result out of it, right? Exactly, exactly. And there's a lot of patient education that goes with it and maintenance. You know, once you do your series of, of laser treatments, you're not done forever because your skin's going to continue to age and you're going to continue to lose collagen and elastin. And up to a certain point when we're doing these stimula stimulation procedures and we're stimulating your body to create more collagen and elastin, we can kind of get ahead of some of the loss. But eventually 
that's going to come down after about six to nine months with some of our deeper deca pulse treatments. You're not going to be creating collagen as fast and you're going to go back into the normal aging process and you're going to start to lose it a little bit more. So while this is still a treatment, every laser treatment is preventative for your future, even if we are treating an active problem at the same time. So we are turning the clock back a little bit. So we're not necessarily going backwards, but we're kind of ticking it in place. So you're not continuing to age as fast, but we need to keep up with it. So if yeah. you're doing some sort of treatment every six months, you are keeping your collagen stimulated. What I usually recommend for people once they're getting into their 40s, do a series of three deca pulses, get that good deep stimulation going. And then let's see you for a cool peel once every six months for maintenance. More if we need to, if we're trying to clean up problems, still target some more wrinkles or pigment. But if you're doing a nice, no downtime, cool peel treatment every six months, that's manageable, that fits into your lifestyle, fits into your schedule, and you're going to stay ahead of the game and you're, gonna, you're not going to need as intense of treatments in the future. Um, doing a little bit along the way is much better than having to drop bombs every so often. The pro aging is one of my favorite terms, right? Yes. Um, I think Dr. Frank in New York City, Dr. Paul Frank wrote a book on that, the pro aging playbook. Um, I mean, that right there, right, is is what we're doing. We're fighting aging. We're not necessarily winning, but we're fighting it as best exactly. as we can, right? <laughs> um, it's going to happen whether we like it or not, but yep. the most that we can hope for is that we age like a fine bottle of wine. We stay the same on the outside and we change a little bit on the inside as we age, hopefully for the better, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We hope that everything up here gets better and wiser. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, any other words that you'd like to say about the Tetra? I mean, other than how much we love it here. Yeah, I know. I mean, I can't say that enough. I'm on probably a dozen calls a day, just nerding out about it. Like this is my favorite tool out of any tool in, in anybody's toolbox, really, because I can, you know, as a rep, just take it from a rep's perspective. I can walk into any office. I can walk up to a provider like you, Kristen, and go, Hey, it's going to work a hundred percent. It's going to work. Um, I can guarantee that it's going to work. And really there isn't a single one of my competitors out there that can do that. Um, to this level, right? Like, hey, yeah, I will treat your completely anesthetized 75 year old patient that really is just sagging. Like, we'll treat her, we'll give her a month of downtime. Yep. But hey, your 22 year old patient that wants a little zhuzh, a little refresh before, you know, her Christmas party or before she goes back to school, you can do that too. Um, and, and there's just, to me, there's nothing that kind of complements a practice and, and anything that you are currently offering than the Tetra. Yeah. I, I love this device. It's just so versatile. You can treat so many different skin conditions and safely and easily and pain-free. Um, when I was in PA school, I was doing my, my elective clinical rotation with a, a facial plastic surgeon up in Massachusetts. And he mm. had a CO2 laser, one of the, the old school ones. Oh, and boy. this was back in, let's see, 2011, I want to say maybe 2012, somewhere yeah. around there. And he would have patients come in for, you know, full face rejuvenation. And it always happened on Thursdays because that's when the nurse anesthetist was there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they would get IV conscious sedation for CO2 laser and yeah. they would also get topical. So mm -hmm. they would be numbing topically. They would be getting, you know, fentanyl and Versed conscious sedation. Yeah. And Oh, just wild downtime, beautiful results, insane downtime. You know, we'd see them back a month later and just like barely out of the woods. Yeah. And how, and how many times a year did you turn on that laser at that office? Right. Not often. Exactly. Versus how much do you turn on the Tetra? Not, oh, oh my God. Like literally daily. It's never off, daily. right? No, That's it's just, it, that thing is like just the energizer bunny, it just, it, it's on and it just keeps on going, you know, oh, like yeah. our, our ventilation system is getting a real workout. <laughs> we use this thing so much. I always say we're barbecuing faces in room one. You well, know? And that's the, that's the kicker. That's why it's so great. I can't tell you how many offices, surgery centers, dermatology practices, med spas, you know, I walk into and they're like, yeah, we haven't turned our CO2 on this year. And I'm going, 
It's insane. You paid a lot of money for that device four, five, eight years ago, and you turn it on once a year. It's crazy. Um, to me, that makes no sense. So why not have an option where you can turn it on every single day and treat your everyday clientele, mm -hmm. but then you can put it into a couple of high gear modes, as I like to say, yeah. and really go after those occasional aggressive patients. Yep. Because to be honest, you know, those very, very aggressive patients that are willing to take a three, four weeks of downtime, they come along every now and then, but they're mm -hmm. not there every day, right? No, no. And this has been such an easy thing to, to sell, to use, to treat, to recover from that we're oftentimes doing it on patients like in the moment, like we're in the room doing something else. And I, you know, they ask me a question, oh, what would be best for this? Like, oh, I've got some under eye crinkle. You know, we did Botox around through here or we did lip filler. What can I do for like my crinkly under eyes? And I'm like, oh, we're doing the cool peel. Do we have time now? Sign the consent. Here we go. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, no numbing, no nothing. And like less than a minute later, it's done. Mm -hmm. So it's such an easy add on treatment to utilize for people. I mean, it, it's effortless. It's, it's literally effortless. When I tell somebody how fast it's going to take for their treatment, like I send them home with prescription numbing cream to apply at home because I'm not having you sit in this office to numb for a procedure. That's going to take me about 15 seconds. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. If we're doing like a peri oral, we're done in 30 seconds maximum. Uh you know, oh, yeah. you're in, you're out, you're done. So I love how fast and easy it is to just like, oh, yep. You want to do that? Oh, you've got a spot there. We want to get, oh, skin tag there. Boop. We're on, we're done. You're out the door. Change the size blast away. Right. Yeah. I, one of my favorite things lately has been sub sebaceous hyperplasia, mm -hmm. finding them and just like blasting them once if trying to wipe them away. If they don't hit them one more time and they typically wipe right off the skin. And it's, my OCD loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. We're going to start playing with, um, we opened up the briefcase the other day and oh. we're going to start <laughs> the silver briefcase. We're going to start playing with, um, the surgical tip a little bit more too. Yes, you are. I am looking forward to that. You're going to fry plenty of eggplants. I'll tell you that. Oh, I can't wait. I can't yeah, wait. I've got of tons of little skin on. tags and moles that I can't <laughs> wait to go to town on. <laughs> That's going to be fun. The surgical pieces are really cool and, and often an overlooked aspect because we do forget, you know, everybody gets hung up on the cool peel aspect of this and it's a fantastic treatment. It's very profitable for offices, but on the flip side of it, you know, we're dealing with a 30 watt and it has the option to be a 50 watt CO2 laser. Um, those are used in surgical applications. Yes. So you can do bloodless cutting, you can perform bloodless blefts, vermilionectomies. There is a whole slew of things that, you know, we don't even talk about on a day to day because it's so specialized mm -hmm. in what this system is used for, but you can do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're, we're super excited to, you know, we, we couldn't feel any more comfortable with the Decapulse and with the Cool Peel and all those applications that we're doing. So we're going to start playing around with the surgical tip. And uh, we've got some intraocular eye shields coming in soon, too. So we're going to yes. start to do some real good over the lid treatments and get right up to that lash line. Those are fun. The intraocular yeah. shields are a blast. I've, yep. I put in oof, four or five pairs this week. I did. We, we did quite a few eyelids this week. I'll tell you that. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. All my patients are like, did you get the shields yet? Like they're all so excited to get it done. <laughs> so they're coming, they're coming. I swear. <laughs> and you're going to look like an alien when they're in. Don't worry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Anthony. Um, this was amazing. And I hope all of you watching and listening now can feel comfortable and confident with CO2 laser. I know it sounds really intimidating. You may be familiar with some of the old school technologies of it. This is one of the easiest and fastest and most pain-free procedures on the market right now. And, you know, downtime doesn't equal results anymore. You know, it's 2022 and you don't have to get blown out and feel like trash and look like trash to get a great result. And this, this machine really turned that around for us. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. I really appreciate you having me on today. I'm hoping to make it out to the East Coast soon. So hopefully we'll all get together and, and grab a bite sometime. Yes, absolutely. Come visit us anytime. I love it. Well, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a 
deca pulsed co2 tr laser treatment to my decollete area i wanted to do something a little bit deeper and more regenerative than just a cool peel in this area uh, because i am a notorious side sleeper and i have some pretty gnarly sun damage on my chest from my younger teenage years of getting some nasty sunburns so i have some lines that kind of go up like a little sunburst on my chest and i'm, I'm really trying to get some collagen and elastin re-going and uh, try to see if i can soften those and help lessen the blow of aging on my chest. So you can see here that our RN Melanie is giving me my treatment. I did a topical numbing cream on the area um, for about an hour prior. Normally I don't numb people that long. I just put it on before I came to work. So got to work early and was already numb and ready to go. Um, but typically about 30 to 45 minutes is really all you need for a decapulse area. Uh, so what you're not seeing here, um, just because the video doesn't capture it all that well, is the tiny little scatter dot pattern that happens. Um, but you do see that little square. Um, so within that square, all those little uh, ablative laser points are getting shot onto my skin. And it's getting absorbed by the water in my skin and vaporizing little columns of skin. And this is a real-time treatment. So you can see just how fast this is going. Um, start to finish, it took under a minute. It was probably about 40 seconds start to finish. So it's extraordinarily quick. And afterwards, I really had no no um, pain with it. It felt a little bit warm like a sunburn and the edges will kind of get a little bit puffy. So it swells ever so slightly, stayed red. Um, but I, I had a really easy recovery with this. Um, and you'll see some pictures after um, the video is over of some of my immediately after and next day looking results. Um, but stay tuned after this video and you'll get to see the cool peel on my face. I did this immediately after the chest and I did absolutely zero numbing for that procedure. Okay, what you're seeing now is an immediately after the deca pulse on the chest. That's the next day. You can see it looks a little bit more gritted out. This next one is me the night of, happy as a clam. This was the next day, just a nice even pink everywhere. And this was the second day as well. You can see it's a little bit more red and a little bit more square. Just a Pinch podcast was written, recorded, edited, and produced by Kristen Jem.